Hey everybody, welcome to the Bandai Procedural Texturing and Shading course to episode 0.3 where we'll make our own shader ball and shading setup. So having Suzanne here and checking the shader like this is nice, but it doesn't give us all properties. So let's go to modeling. Okay, so by default it puts us in edit mode for Suzanne. Now let's go out. Uh, out of that by pressing tab and deleting Suzanne. This is not a beginner modeling tutorial, so if you really can't model, check a modeling tutorial first. But I'll go over it step by step. So, first we want to go to Add Mesh and go to UV Sphere. We go into Edit Mode by pressing tab, pressing the top vertex, and I'm pressing Ctrl Plus to expand our selection to like here. And we press X or Delete and delete the vertices. We go out of edit mode, and then we go to our modifiers over here, add a modifier, and we're gonna add the... Where is it? Where is it? Solidify, <laughs> here you go. Uh, solidify modifier. And we're gonna put... And we're gonna put the thickness to about, let's say, 0.2. Nice. So now we're just gonna press apply and go back into edit mode. So now we see that this was applied nicely. We're gonna go to uh, add select mode. So alt right click on this circle to select it. Then shift alt right click to select this edge as well. And then press control B to battle these. So you can see if you move the mouse now, we have a nice battle. We wanna make this pretty sharp. And we wanna scroll up once to, to have this three edges instead of two. We just left click. And there you go. Now I go tap, go out of it. And now I press control one to give it uh, one viewport subdivision. Now I'm pressing W and press on shade smooth. Nice. Second element we want to add is another UV sphere. This one we're gonna scale by a factor of 0.8 because uh, we uh, put the thickness on 0.2 for the sphere earlier. So, we're gonna go S for scale and just press dot eight. I press enter. Now again, I'm gonna press control one to give it one subdivision. Go to W and shade smooth. We see there's a small edge between the two, so we can maybe increase the size a little bit. So it just touches the edge there. Nice. Now, uh, with pressing shift, we want to select the second sphere as well. Press Ctrl P and parent it. So if we just select the outer one and we move it, the middle one moves as well. Now, I just want to move it up by 1.5 and rotate it by the Y axis by 45 degrees. It's looking nice. So now we want to add some elements that are thinner uh, and give us a little bit more of a flatter look uh, down here. So we have the shader previewed on a spherical object and on a flat object. So I'm just going to add a mesh cylinder. Go into edit mode and just press scale Z 0.1. That'll do and then just move Z 0.1. So it's now on the base of our world grid. So now we go to face select, move to the bottom face, and we're just gonna press I to inset it. Just to avoid some normal uh, issues popping up, but we can leave the end gone here. Doesn't really matter. But for this one, we're gonna press I to inset to about here, then E to extrude, so it connects nicely to the sphere. And then maybe if you go into wireframe mode, you can delete the face over here. Let's go back to solid mode. So now in edit mode, we can go to edge select with alt and right click. We select the circle around here, shift alt this one and shift alt this one. I will do the same thing with it earlier. Control B, it's already gonna be three edges. We're gonna make this pretty thin. 
Something like this. Nice. And then just because I'm paranoid about normals, I'm just gonna add with Ctrl R two loop cuts here. Uh, just right click to apply them in a default position. And then I'm gonna go back into object mode. And I'm gonna press Ctrl 1 to add the viewport subdivision. And shade smooth. Nice. So the last one thing we want to add is a floor with a texture on it so we can see some reflections and we can actually um, check out like how the object interacts with the floor. So we're just going to press Shift A again, go to uh, Add Mesh Plane, and we're just going to hmm, let's increase this by a factor of 3. Yeah, this is nice. Okay, so now we modeled our shading layout. So now we go into Shading and apply some sh shaders. To this. I'm select my sphere, press period to focus. We can already see this looks pretty nice. So we're first gonna select our plane. If you have trouble seeing what you're selecting, let's just turn on the gizmos so we can see what we selected. Let's press new. I'm gonna explain to you what we do later, but just follow along for now. Uh, but of course, because we're doing procedural, let's add a checker texture procedurally. So let's add a texture and add, and add a checker texture. So if we add this to the base color, we we'll see our checker is added. Nice. So we're going to duplicate this one by, press, by selecting it and pressing Shift D. So the second one appears. And then we want to add a color, mix RGB note pop these two ones in here and bring this scale one to 10. What we see happens now. We have a nice, a little bit more nicer looking checker texture. If we move between the two, you can see we can adjust. So wait, this one looks nicer. Let's point this on 0.25. And then we have a nice procedural tech checker texture. So we can call this Checker floor, just to keep our naming convenient. So now we want to apply a shader to the middle sphere. The middle sphere is not going to be our shader we're editing, but a default gray shader. So just select it, press new. Let's call this core sphere. We might change this one uh, depending on which shader we want to create and with which shader we want to compare this directly. But for now, we're gonna go to the base color, select a value, and just put 0.25. So it gives a nice dark gray. And let's pump up the roughness. Uh, let's go to 0.7. Yeah, this looks nice. So now, last but not least, let's select our base and our outer sphere, press Ctrl J to add these two to, to each other, and then press new, and let's call this, hmm, look def. Of course, we will call this whatever material we're working on. And now, if we adjust this, this will become a nice shader that we can preview, like so. Of course, you can make your shader ball as fancy as you want. Some people create their logos in it. If you want to become a look dev artist, this is a nice setup to uh, preview your shaders. You can put multiple of these next to each other uh, and then have a shader library nicely put out in front of you. Uh, I like to keep it simple. People add more like edges. Uh, you, you can always do this. But I think once the shader is readable, uh, it's fine. So the only thing left to do is save the scene and then you have your shader layout and you can open it every time you start a tutorial. I'll, and we'll be starting from this. The next tutorial will actually start shading. So I'll be explaining everything from notes, the principal shader, uh, procedural textures, and then we start creating specific shaders. So I hope you're looking forward to it. If you have any questions, leave them down below. And, and one more note, we're working in Blender 2.8 Release Candidate. Things might change, but 
I'll make new videos as soon as they change and replace these starter courses with them. So we keep up to date with Blender. So thanks for watching to the start to the procedural texturing and shading course. And I see you in a bit. Goodbye.